Above the edge of a forest, a strange device emerges. A massive high-tech antenna, like something out of a science fiction film. This is the dish of the GBT, the Green Bank Telescope. The metallic giant towers over the landscape with its disproportionate dish of over 110 meters of diameter turned toward the sky. The GBT is the largest fully steerable radio telescope in the world and the most sensitive. But this sensitivity imposes considerable constraints on our Western way of life. When you take a closer look, time seems to have stopped in the 1950s here. Only old diesel cars, cars with spark plugs that make electric arcs are banned. Few power lines or modern buildings. No Wi-Fi, no mobile phones, no microwave ovens, or even radios for kilometers around the antenna. Being a neighbor of the GBT means taking a vow of silence, radio silence. Karen O'Neill, the astronomer in charge of the site, guides Alain to the top of this particular tool. She likes to compare it to optical telescopes, closer cousins than it seems. It's funny because um it seems very different. When you look at them, they, they look very different, but in fact, they're really the same thing. So an optical telescope is just looking at photons with a certain energy, and that energy is a very short wavelength. Yes. And then when you talk about a radio telescope, you're just looking at something that's the wavelength is much, much longer than that. So you have the photons, you have the yes. light waves coming down from the sky. They bounce down off the GBT. So instead of passing through, like you get with the lens, they're bouncing off. They bounce up onto the subreflector yes. right above us. It refocuses it down to the receivers here, so this, uh, in this case, to the S-band receiver. Yes. But it's the same idea as an optical telescope and just an extreme version of that. It's time for Helen to head for the control room and make the most of the observation time she has obtained. For almost a week, the metal giant will be at the service of the Cosmic Flows program. So, Rob, can you load the script, please? Okay. 8C010? Yes. Okay, the script is loaded and the telescope is slowing to the source. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, please let me know when we are on target and that we can launch the integration. Okay, just a second. Okay, the telescope is on target. Right. Okay, I was just looking to see if we had any data yet. Yes. I don't see it's starting to come in now. Okay. Like at Mauna Kea, the hours spent in the control room go by, and with them, so do the galaxies. The galaxies observed in Hawaii for their brightness are reobserved as a priority by Alain to find the second measurement, their absolute luminosity. Ce que je fais avec le télescope de Green Bank, c'est que je mesure la vitesse de rotation sur elle-même d'une galaxie spirale. Alors, je suis obligé de faire une galaxie à la fois avec ce télescope. Donc je pointe une galaxie que je connais déjà, que j'ai déjà repérée par exemple à Hawaï en prenant sa photo, qui m'apparaît être une bonne galaxie spirale, légèrement inclinée, sans voisine. Donc il y a toute un, une série de critères pour que ce soit une bonne galaxie pour moi. Et à ce moment-là, je la pointe avec le télescope de Green Bank et j'essaye de mesurer la vitesse de rotation des nuages de gaz d'hydrogène dans cette galaxie. By measuring the rotation of hydrogen clouds, which are very abundant in the periphery of spiral galaxies, cosmographers can calculate the rotation velocity of these galaxies. The galaxies that spin the fastest have more stars in them, and thus have the highest luminosity. By comparing this luminosity to the brightness obtained in Hawaii, our cosmographers can calculate the distance between us and the galaxy. This is the first key for their dynamic maps. There are basically two different kinds of galaxies. One are called ellipticals, and it's been known for a long time. They have mainly old stars. That's because star formation in them has shut down. 
Spiral galaxies, which are flattened rotating disks, have a lot of gas in them left today, which fueled star formation. Our Milky Way galaxy is one of these. And they are more complicated spectroscopically because they have old and young stars, and that's hard to, harder to model. contributes to the map by concentrating on spiral galaxies first. With the GBT, she goes back to the region studied in Hawaii, the Coma supercluster. But in Greenbank, she is also ideally located to explore the constellations of Perseus and Pisces. It's in this direction that the immense supercluster of Perseus Pisces can be found much larger than Coma, it's a close neighbor of Linnea Kea. For a large part of the sky of the Northern Hemisphere, the team now has the two necessary measurements to calculate the distances and movements of spiral galaxies for the new map. <laughs> 